Okay, welcome to the 9B, which is chapter 21, musculoskeletal system. Another important system, I mean, all systems are important because they work together, each has its own function in, uh, in the wellness of the residents and, you know, everybody. This is a system that has to do with all the muscles, all the bones, all the movements, uh, or lack thereof of the body. This is a system that allows the body to move, to bend, to stretch, and it gives shape and all of that. So let's dig into it. Structure and function of the musculoskeletal system. It seems like every section two is the function of the system. So you can't miss it next time. <laughs> Muscles, a uh, group of tissues that uh, contract and relax that allows for motion, movement, supports the body structure, protect organs, and create heat. Gives you give the body heat. Bones, the strong connective tissue, uh, which which is the skeleton of the body, that is make up the frame of the body, the shape of the body, allows for movement. Um, protects the organs as well. They have joints where two bones meet and allow for flexibility. Um, so cartilage, the end of the bones, um, you have you have like a whitish thing at the end of each each bone. You know when we when we eat chicken or mm -hmm. then you like that like love chew that end. <laughs> That's cartilage. Then in between two bones, there's always like a, a little sack of fluid that provides cushion between between the two bones, between the joints. So this this it's called bursa. It's in every connection. It, it provides cushioning so that there's not friction between the, the bones. The tendons and ligaments they connect, you know, muscles and bones together to allow for movement. That's your skeletal system, the skeleton of the body. There are 206. 206. 206. Different bones in your anatomy and physiology class, you have to name them all. You have to know them. If, you, if, you, if your resident have a, have a fracture on any of the bones, you have to know which one. Okay, but you have to know the major ones. Yeah. Yeah. You have to know the major ones, definitely. <laughs> and, <laughs> but you know, if you if you like, right now the, the bones are not labeled, no names, right? Once you you know you used to make a make a photocopy of that page, and then you start labeling them now. I mean, you already know some of it, right? You label it and study it, and then if you're using a pencil, or you've or you've uh, made several copies, you keep learning the names until you master them. So once you know it, there's this feeling of you've had this much knowledge because of knowing the bones, and it's something that you can relate to because you have it, you have these bones in you. Like oh wow, so that's what this called, this particular one is called. So, and a lot of times, again, remember, there are some diseases that are named after the bone or after a body part. So you get to learn. Once you now know the names of the bones, you now have to know what kind of disease normally occur at which bone and what causes it, what's the treatment for it, and so on. There are three types of muscles, skeletal muscles, smooth muscles, and cardiac muscles. Cardiac muscles are muscles around the chest that protects the heart, those soft muscles. Then there are four types of bones, the long bones, short bones, flat bones, and irregular bones three types of joints. There are joints that move, there are joints that move slightly, and then there are joints that don't move at all. Okay. 
that's why when you're when you're lifting something up the the, 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 the backbone the vertebral column here is not it's supposed to move slightly it's not meant to bend so much so when it bends it puts stress on the back and it's painful because it's not it was only supposed to bend slightly not a lot whereas you have like joints you know other bones that you can bend uh, because that's the you know the where the, 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 the bulk of the weight of the body is carried by the leg bones Functions of the, the musculoskeletal system we know gives shape and form to the body. So that fine shape you have is because of your musculoskeletal system. Um, and then there are people that are born with deformities, physical deformities, and some of the bones did not develop well. Or muscles, then they look different. It, you know, the skeleton, skeleton, skeletal system maintains posture, permits movement, protects internal organs, stores calcium in the bone and phosphorus in the bone, produces heat, uh, produces some blood cells. Again, this section is always the crucial section. And That, that we always want to pay attention to. Normal changes of aging, how does musculoskeletal system affect the elder? So that we understand. Remember in all systems, as we get older, what happens? Everything decreases. Things that used to be more, now is less. Things that used to be strong, now is weak. So muscle weakness, loss of muscle tone, bones lose calcium, which now cause them to break easily. Height is gradually reduced because the bones start shortening. Um, loss of muscle mass, joints are less flexible. Sometimes they stiffen, they cannot stretch out their hands like this. Sometimes they have contractures where they just stay like that. Muscular dystrophy and atrophy. They both kind of have the same, they're similar in meaning. In uh, meaning. The difference is that, and they both, it's a condition of uh, where the, the muscles are weakened or wasting. They, like they, they start losing muscle, which makes it difficult for them to function normally. But muscular dystroph dystrophy is hereditary. Okay. Atrophy is not. Atrophy can happen at any point. Muscular dystrophy, hereditary progressive disease in which muscle tissue is destroyed and muscle atrophy is meaning it wastes. Okay. Allow, if, if your resident have that condition, allow more time for movement, allow more time for them to function or do things. Okay. Osteoporosis or osteopenia, they mean the same thing. That's when you have, you know, bones become weakened, brittle, break easily, because um, they are eating well, uh, the bone is losing calcium and phosphorus. So it breaks easily. Osteopenia, the density of the bone reduces. Okay. Points about osteoporosis, bone loses mass, causing them to break easily. We talk about that. Lack of regular exercise, because exercise also strengthens the strength of the bone. So you need more exercise, go for a walk. Um, it's not only for weight loss, or just overall health. Exercise does the body good. So, um, I used to <laughs> I don't exercise much. I teach and I don't practice what I teach too. The, the only exercise that I get, and in my job we have 
four floors, five floors. So I don't take the elevator at work. And I'll run up and down. If I sit in my office and I get bored, I'll just go and run up the steps. But we have a gym at work too. Sometimes, um, but you can't leave your work and be going to the gym at the workplace to be using the gym. So you don't use it before you start work or use it on your break or you use it after work. So that they won't say you're abandoning your work. But find time, exercise, go for a walk, swimming, whatever you love to do, tennis. I love playing tennis. I don't know how to play, but I love swimming. One of the things I used to do when I was single, every girlfriend I had must learn how to play tennis. So we always we'll go to a tennis court. Oh, I don't know how to play, I've never played before. So don't worry, it'll be fun. Buy a racket and then once we start hitting the ball back and forth, before you know it, you'll be the one bothering me. When are we going to play tennis? <laughs> At first, they didn't want to learn. When it's fun, you walk around, you run around the court and arthritis, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, they're all arthritis. Don't worry about which one is which. They both have the same characteristics. They affect the joints where it swells up. Um, could be any any of the joints, any joints in the body. Um, it will swell up painful, makes it hard for them to move, hips and knees. They get medication, um, exercises will help. Okay. Try to, again, try to assist them with range of motion. Be careful when you're doing exercises with someone who has arthritis because they're gonna be in pain, so move your hands, move slowly and watch their face to see if they're grimacing, um, their facial expression tells you they're in pain, then you should stop or have the, have the not, charge nurse give them pain medication before you do the range of motion exercises. Um, but encourage them to exercise, because the more they exercise, the exercise might be painful a little bit, but they're going to benefit more from exercising than not exercising. But assist them with activities of daily living if they cannot perform it and so on. That was, uh, I talked about the fluid that is in, in between joints. When it gets swollen, it's called bursitis, but you don't need to know that, memorize that. We have amputation. Sometimes the limbs get cut off because of a condition. We learned the other day that those who are diabetic, diabetic sometimes um, they have decreased blood circulation to the body, especially to the legs. Then, if you don't, if you're not having blood circulation to the legs, then the, the, the end start becoming dark black. That's gangrene setting in because that body part is dead. They have to do amputation. So amputation is surgical removal of a body part. Prosthesis is like any equipment that allows you to perform a function. Um, pay attention to this to phantom sensation and phantom limb pain. Phantom, phantom means false. So phantom sensation is where somebody feel something in their body part that is not there. So for example, let's say my right leg has been cut off. Then I tell you that my right ankle feels warm. But there is no right ankle because it's been cut off. But I'm still feeling that it's a false feeling. But you cannot tell them that, <laughs> just keep them blank. You don't tell them that they're lying. Oh, it's not so. They're feeling it for real. It takes a while after amputation for the brain and all the, the nerve, all the connect, all the, um, the nervous system that send messages back and forth to be on the same page, to 
So let the brain know that there is no more back there. So don't be picking up signals down there as if there's a there's a foot there. Same thing with phantom limb pain. Residents can still feel pain. Same example, they can tell you they're feeling pain on their right ankle, but there is no right ankle. It's been cut off. In the first few days after amputation, keep an eye on them because they're gonna fall. What are they? They're gonna fall by getting up from bed and trying to walk and thinking the leg is still there. I've had several occasions where then we heard boom in the room when the Mr. Jones is on the floor. Mr. Jones, what happened? I got up, I wanted to go to the bathroom and I fell. I said, but why did you try to walk when you know that your right leg was cut off? Well, I thought it was there. <laughs> That's what you see. We can't laugh at them, it's the phantom limb sensation that they're feeling. Flexion is to bend the body. What's supposed to be?
Okay. So we're talking about common common disorders of the musculoskeletal system and we talk about amputation and how to be careful because they still think that the leg is still there and just keep an eye on them. So so it says here, phantom sen that phantom sensation is real. You shouldn't laugh at it. Laugh at them. Just you don't argue. Just say okay. Um, you like some pain? If they say they, they need pain medication for their right ankle, it's okay. I'll let the child nurse know. And as the child, as the child nurse, you must give them the pain because they're feeling the pain anyway. So whether the limb is there or not, they fill in the pain to so give them the pain medication. Um, prosthesis, we talked about that. Some of them will have prosthetic leg after the amputation. Some of them will be using a cane or I mean like, um, crutches. So they'll teach you how to use it. When they first come back from the hospital after the surgery, that stump, the end of the where they, where, they, where they cut it off. You might still have stitches or stitches on, stitches on it. So be careful when you're providing care and so on. This is amputation and exercises. Fracture and sling. Fracture is a broken bone. It could be partial fracture or full fracture. A sling is something you use to hold like the, the arm in, in place support it, talk about fracture, broken bone, caused by accident or trauma or so. Types of fracture, they're not going to ask you this, this is phenosis. Um, one thing with uh, any kind of pain in the limb or swelling, uh, this acronym RICE, that's what you use to decrease it, to, to take, take care of it. You rest the area, you ice it, you, you can use compression elastics, a bandage to wrap it to decrease the swelling and, and lift it up, elevate. So rise means rest, ice, compress, and elevate. Sometimes they have a cast on after the fracture. <clears throat> you have to be careful with the cast. Don't let it get wet. Don't, um, sometimes they feel each inside the, the cast. Don't allow them to use a knife, a spoon, or any kind of stick to, to stick in there to try to scratch themselves. They can't do anything about it, they just have to endure. One thing with the cast is always check their toes to make sure they can still move it. Because sometimes the cast can be on, and there's no more circulation going to the toes. Um, but how you know that there's circulation, you can ask them to move their toes, you can feel it to see if it's cold. If it's cold, it's a problem. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be warm if blood is still flowing over there. Follow your doctor's orders to reposition them and um, some of them might be on exercise program or they wear crutches and stuff. Hip replacement, total hip replacement, um, when the hip bone has been replaced. Sometimes it's total, sometimes it's partial. The most important thing for, for the CNA to know is what is the weight bearing, what is the weight bearing order? Can they put on weight on one leg? Can they put on weight on both legs? Some of this uh, I know these abbreviations were not covered in when we did abbreviation the other day, but they're not going to use it, or they will write it like that and put the bracket. Total hip replacement, THR, but you're not going to hear and say, oh, be careful, Miss Susie had THR. They're they, they going to say they had total hip replacement. Partial weight bearing is when somebody can bear weight on one hand, on one leg. And at least swing when they get out of bed, they can put leg on 
you know, put weight on one leg and get on the wheelchair with assistance. non weight bearing means they cannot put any kind of weight on, their, on themselves at all. It means if they need to be transferred, it has to be completely from the bed straight to the chair with none of your body part touching the ground. Which means you're either going to use a higher lift or you ask for help. Full weight bearing means they can put weights on both legs. Abduction and add deduction. If you think of add meaning to put together. So add deduction is when you bring your arm towards your body line. Then abduction is when you take it away. So for example, um, you can say if you're doing exercises to the hand, you can say, okay, I'm going to I'm going to do abduction, abduction to your hand, but you're not going to tell you where's that, that. They'll be like, at what? So, but abduction is to go this way. Adduction is to come back to the body. Okay, in case you see somewhere in the quiz, um, to talk about those. One thing to know in all cases, if somebody is to stay in bed, they are not with bearing. Um, always keep things they need um, close by. So that they don't have to keep calling you or try to stretch to reach it and fall. Uh, keep an eye on them, keep an eye on the area of the surgery. It could be draining, it could be infected. So you can report it to the uh, charge nurse without knee replacement, without hip replacement. The same kind of care you will take to be careful with the resident. You do not want any dislocation of that knee or that hip as you're trying to turn them or transfer them. So all of that. Traction is a device that helps people stay in place. Sometimes because of the accident they're in and the surgery they've done to reconstruct the body um, bones, they will be they're supposed to be in a position like that. So attraction will help keep them in place. Okay. But that's in the hospital, it's not something you see in the nursing home much at all. The elastic band-aid is used to decrease swelling. You just just manage your wrap just for the area to like that. It's used to decrease swelling. Mm -hmm. That's the end. I know some people can't wait to to ex exit the building. Somebody 